Gentleman for Timmins, James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You have to be some special kind of incompetent to get lower percentage marks in the polls than Danielle Smith, but then step forward, Doug Ford. Uh, Doug Ford, who's tried to rip up the charter rights of janitors in schools and thought that was a good idea. A guy who's trying to pave over the green belt for his buddies. But people forget that the first thing Doug Ford did was to rip up the carbon pricing system in Ontario. People didn't pay a carbon tax in Ontario. And Doug Ford said, I'm going to rip up the system that makes it possible for Ontarians not to pay a carbon tax. Uh, and then Ontarians are going to pay a carbon tax, and then I'll allow Doug Ford to jump up and down and holler and shout and go to the Supreme Court and say I'm going to fight a carbon tax that was imposed because of his dumb decision. We see Conservatives time and time and time again coming into the House with policies that are driving it more and more difficult for people while the plan is in crisis. I'd like to ask my honourable colleague what he thinks it is about the Conservatives in Ontario supporting someone like Doug Ford on such a dumb position. The Honourable Member for a Parliamentary Secretary. Well, he's absolutely right. The Member's absolutely right. In 2006, it was Ontario and Quebec that made the cap-and-trade deal with California. And then as soon as Doug Ford came along, he ripped it up and said, I'm out of this deal. And what do we see five, six years later? We see Quebec and California having progressed so much further in terms of environmental protections, in terms of electrifying their grid, in terms of in encouraging uh, electric vehicles. It, it's, they're, they're, they seem to be light years ahead now. And Ontario got stuck behind because Doug Ford thought that, and just like these Conservatives do in my opinion, that they can play to fears and they can play to people's emotions when they start talking about issues like this. I mean, that and the fact that we shouldn't be surprised that Conservatives who vote 54% at, at their last convention that climate change doesn't exist, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that they take policy decisions like this. On a le temps pour une brève question,